Synovial joints right here are the biggest classification. Right? They contain synovial fluid, and I want you to think of synovial fluid as like an oil, a nice, slightly viscous oil. They're all diarthrotic, even though some will allow more movement than others. Most joints that unite bones of appendicular skeleton are synovial joints. They reflect the greater mobility of appendicular skeleton compared to the axial. So axial is right down the middle of your body. So your ribs, your vertebrae, your sutures, right? Your pubic symphysis, those are all axial. And what do they all have in common? Those joints are all very non-mobile. Synovial joints, on the other hand, are more likely to see, be seen on your extremities. And because they're seen extremities and they're synovial, well, your extremities, we know there's more mobility in extremities. That's where we manipulate the environment, right? If you want to throw a baseball, well, it's your extremities, right? If you want to kick a soccer ball, it's your legs and your feet that do all the work. So you need more freedom of movement in those areas. And that's what we do see here, is that the synovial joints being freely movable are more located in your extremities or your appendicular skeleton, appendages. So let's talk about these synovial joints. What do they all have in common? So let's take a look at this picture right here. This is something very general. It can be between two all right, metacarpal bones or a metacarpal and a phalangeal bone. All right? So what we see in a synovial joint is this. You have articular cartilage lining the ends of the long bones that are part of the joint. So let's imagine this is your, right here, is found between your metacarpal and your phalangeal bone, right? What happens? You'll be moving your fingers a lot during the course of the day. Think about all the different movements you do. What happens is that there'll be a lot of movement between those bones. To make sure you don't have bone on bone rubbing, there's a little bit of cartilage on the ends. Remember, this articular cartilage right here on each end that articular cartilage, that was found really early in life, right? That was a cartilage that when we replace the rest of your long bones with bone tissue, before it was all cartilage, but then we replaced it with bone tissue. We replace it except in two areas. One area, your epiphyseal growth plate. The other area where we don't replace with bone tissue immediately is this, the ends of our long bones. Right? That stays cartilage and becomes our articular cartilage. So your articular cartilage can be the single oldest material in our body, <coughs> which is crazy to think about, right? It's older than even your brain, older than your lungs, right? Maybe your heart is probably the only thing that's a little bit older, that's it. So this articular cartilage has been in place since you were in utero real early about the eighth week in utero, right? So this articular cartilage, the cartilage is nice and smooth. So again, right, it's kind of hard to visualize this in us. So I want you to visualize it in a chicken. So when you're looking at a drumstick, right, the ends of the drumsticks are really, really shiny. That's the articular cartilage right here. Now, if you eat a drumstick and then you have like a quarter where it's a thigh and a drumstick, well, the thigh is a femur, and the drumstick is a tibia. So when you open it up, that should be the knee joint. I know, right? And what you see is that it is nice and smooth on the ends right there. Because you have cartilage, the cartilage allows you to have nice, smooth, frictionless movement. Perfect. Now, we want that, all of our joints, to have somewhat of nice stability. Even though they want to be mobile, we need a little bit more stability. Because the last thing you want to do is pick something up and dislocate a finger, right? So how do we make sure that it's strong enough? We have this capsule. The capsule right here connects the proximal part of the bone, of one bone, to the, right, the distal part of one bone to the proximal part of the other. So what we're going to see is that this capsule, right, in our fingers, it surrounds our knuckles. 
right there. The capsule contains a fibrous region that's outside. This fibrous region contains dense irregular connective tissue for strength, right? For strength in multiple directions. It's continuous with the fibrous layer of the periosteum, meaning that this fibrous capsule right here is part of the periosteum. So it's very strong, right? Normally, you cannot remove that capsule unless you actually cut through part of the bone tissue because this fibrous capsule is continuous. Remember, the periosteum is an external layer of the bone. So this external layer of the bone, the periosteum, becomes the fibrous capsule, which then goes to the next bone and becomes a periosteum of the next bone, really reinforcing that joint right here. See that? Here's a periosteum, here's a fibrous capsule, and then it comes in and becomes part of the periosteum of the next bone. By the way, this makes that joint incredibly hard to kind of remove, right? I remember when I was, you know, we were doing, all right, cadaver labs when I was in medical school. This sounds very gross, but one of the things we wanted to see was the elbow and the shoulder joint. So we tried to cut through and disarticulate the elbow. I know, sounds bad, right? So what do we do? We have to cut through all the muscle, obviously the skin and the fat, so we remove all the tendons, all the ligaments. And then we're left with the capsule connecting the humerus to the radius and ulna, right? It took us about three sharp scalpels before we could cut through this capsule completely, right? This is how dense and thick this capsule is. Once we cut through it, then you can see the actual joint. And then we can kind of move it around, right? Keep in mind, this person, right, give up the body to science, so you know, we want to at least learn from it. So in other words, this fibrous capsule is incredibly strong. And it makes sure that we don't dislocate certain joints. Now, to make sure that the bones move without friction and pain, number one, we have articular cartilage. Number two, we have synovial fluid. These synovial fluid right here is like engine oil. Right? It's the oil that's found here and it allows for a nice slippery movement between the bones. It's formed by our synovial membrane that also connects these two bones together, reinforcing this fibrous capsule, which connects those two bones together, making it even stronger, that capsule. So again, that capsule is like the area that keeps those joints together. So it has to be super strong. Inside, you have this synovial membrane, which makes the synovial fluid, a slippery fluid that allows nice frictionless movement. Now, sometimes in certain joints, they might swell up after repeated use. So basketball players, right? After they've been playing, running, and jumping a lot, right? What happens is their knee might swell. Well, what does that mean when your knee swells? It means that for that joint, there's a little rupture of the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid should be in the knee, now it slightly ruptures, and that fluid now drains out and actually found external now to the knee joint, and now it makes it harder to move because of this fluid that's kind of restricting that movement. But it is a synovial fluid that kind of moved out. Right, so the synovial fluid, complex mixture of polysaccharides, proteins, fat, and cells with hyaluronic acid giving us that slippery, right, appearance and the slippery feel. Now, I don't think anybody has ever seen synovial fluid. I remember I was doing an internship with a rheumatologist, right, with joint doctors, and there was a woman that was in there and her knee was huge. And the rheumatologist had a huge needle, right, with a big syringe, and all he did was just put the needle right into the knee, retract the syringe, and remove multiple, you know, cc's or milliliters of that synovial fluid, right? Then you just drain it, plunge the syringe, you can see just how viscous it was, right? So it allows you to have that nice slippery feel. Now with the synovial joints, take a look at this. No blood vessel penetrates through. 
There are blood vessels, there's nerve supply in the capsule, but there are no blood vessels going to the cartilage right here. All right, meaning if you tear the cartilage here, you will not have any nutrients to repair and heal. This is why you don't really repair and heal when you tear a cartilage, because you don't have blood vessels, right? How are you gonna repair and heal when there are no nutrients? So we do see it in the actual capsule. We do see the nerves as well in the capsule. By the way, there are no nerves as well in the articular cartilage. So most of the time when somebody hurts their articulating cartilage in their knee or their meniscus in the knee, right? It doesn't hurt a lot. Not like an ACL tear. People know when they tear their ACL. People know when they tear their Achilles tendon. They know immediately because of the pain. But when you tear your meniscus, right? Usually there's no pain with the tear. What happens though is, right? Now you have cartilage that kind of springs up because it's torn. When you try to straighten your knee, your knee locks up and you can't straighten it, right? And what happens then? Well, what happens is we have two choices. We can either shave off and remove the cartilage or we suture it back together. If we suture it back together, there is very little chance, right, that it will kind of reform and heal, right? So usually people just take the chance of just shaving it off, and now you just have less cartilage there. And now, from that point on, you're at real high risk for osteoarthritis. So when I hear ACL tear versus cartilage tear, well, ACL tear hurts like crazy. Right? So you would imagine that you would rather have cartilage tear. Right? ACL tear though, you can heal, you can replace, and in about a year, you'll be better than normal. With the cartilage tear, there's no pain, but we have very limited amounts that we can do with it. If we shave it off, well now at that point, you're at much higher risk of osteoarthritis, which will eventually lead you to have a joint replacement. Again, what are these nerves? Here, the nerves here allow us to have the concept of proprioception, knowing where your limbs are in time and place. That's proprioception, without looking down. When you're playing baseball, right, your arm, when you're throwing that ball, your arm is going super fast. How do I know when to release that ball? I can't look at it, right? If I do, I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere I expect it. Right? So I can't look at the ball when I'm throwing, I have to look straight ahead. So how do I know when to release it? How does the body know? It's this, proprioception. All right, proprioception, with practice, you activate these proprioceptive pathways over and over, All right? With that practice, you have a sense of feel of when to release it, All right? And when you release it, sometimes it's a little bit off. So you're able to feel that you might release it a little bit earlier. Keep in mind, your arm is going super fast. For baseball players, right, in the majors, that arm is going at about 75 miles per hour. That's incredibly fast. So, and then you have to release it like a millisecond before normal? Yeah, that's a sense of feel or touch. So when you hear of that, that is proprioception. Getting the signals from your limbs, telling you when to release a basketball so that it can rotate correctly. Want to jump and then release so that you can actually make a basket when somebody's trying to block your shot, right? All of that is happening. And what happens if you have to think about it? If you have to think about it, you can get it blocked, right? You can't hesitate. So you have to almost instinctively go up there and lay it up a little bit higher. That's proprioception. Getting that signal to adjust, right, to that movement. Let's take a little break.